this song, like all our songs, are dedicated to And to know we have a disease, we have to know how to identify it. And here's where the problem came in. I would ask people, how do we know we have a disease? I would ask people, what is disease? What is disease? Disease is simply another word for discomfort. That's all it is. Disease is another word for discomfort. There's only one disease in today's world with many different stages. Doctors have given all these stages different names, but there's one disease with many different stages. The final stages are things like cancer, heart attack, strokes, and things like that. But nobody wakes up one morning and suffers from these things without experiencing the beginning stages of disease. What happens is they don't identify the beginning stages of disease or they ignore it and it keeps coming back worse and worse and worse. I would ask people, how do you know you have a disease? And the dangerous answer I get would be, I feel. If you're waiting to how you feel to determine you have an illness, chances are you're going to be in the latest stage of disease before you even realize something is wrong. Why is that? Because when the body is toxic, it cannot give a true response. When the body is toxic, it'll give a false response. Here's an example. When I was a little kid, I could eat a gallon full of ice cream and not feel sick. Now I can take one tablespoon of ice cream and feel sick. The cleaner you become, the truer the response comes, and your body will react to toxic things more appropriately. But when you're toxic, you can eat a lot of bad things, and your body's not going to respond even though you're creating a lot of damage. So, boy, waiting how you feel is not the best way to determine that you have a disease. Remember, there's one disease with many different stages. Now, even if you suffer from the final stages, we're not going to focus on them tonight, because I believe if you look at the beginning stages, you never have to worry about the end stages. But even if you suffer from the final stages, something like cancer, understand that the body, as long as it has energy left to overcome the illness, when you start doing something right, even if it's just one little spark of energy, you can overcome any illness. And the amazing thing is, there's no medical test, there's no medical doctor out there that can tell you when the body has no energy left and it cannot come back. This is why I tell people, no matter what anyone tells you, you should never give up trying, because nobody could truly tell you when your body doesn't have enough energy to come back from any illness if you start doing the right things. And if it doesn't have enough energy left, no matter what you do is not going to work, so you might as well just do your best to try and see what happens. Somebody came to me once and said, Paul, my doctor told me I only have three months to live. What should I do? I said, you better go find a new doctor. <laughs> because the only thing that doctor was using to determine that person had three months was every person that doctor is treated with that illness only survived three months. That's not a very good track record. You want to go to a doctor that says you have 70, 80, 90 years, not three months. <coughs> Remember, there's no way to actually tell them. <coughs> But if we take care of the beginning stages, we don't have to worry about the end stages. Now, if we can't go by how we feel to learn the beginning stages of disease, how can we identify this? How else can we identify we even have a disease? Well, I've been all over the world, and I've met people from many different cultures, and I've interviewed a lot of people and studied this for a long time. And I could tell you, the two beginning stages of disease are common just about all over the world. In fact, they're so common, they're happening to children younger and younger today. But people don't believe it because it's happening so much, people just accept it as normal. The two beginning signs of disease is laziness and constipation. Laziness and constipation. If somebody told you that these weren't a disease, you've been lied to. As a matter of fact, I know people that are so lazy, they're happy to constipate so they don't got to get up and go to the bathroom. <laughs> That's how bad it's become in today's world. Now some people want to deny that, but I don't listen to people that are full of something. <laughs> but that's how bad it's become in today's world. So now we know what disease is, we know how to identify it, we know there's many different stages. Now the question is, what causes disease? Again, there's many different causes to disease. There's emotional causes, there's spiritual causes, but from a physical standpoint, what truly causes disease? And there's two things. There's two common things anywhere in the world you'll find the same two common disease. And it's what most people are doing, that's the scary point. The two causes of disease, from a physical standpoint, are overeating and undersleeping. Overeating and undersleeping. In fact, you can't do one without the other. Because when you overeat, you're going to end up undersleeping. Because the more food you eat, the more sleep you need. But what do people do when they're getting less sleep? 
not more sleep. And they say, what are we supposed to do, stay in bed all day and quit our jobs? No, you need to find out why you need so much sleep to begin with. It's because we're overeating. Understand, sleeping is another word for healing. And when you cut your sleep short, you're cutting your healing short. People are overeating, creating more of a need, more abuse to their body, and then they're not giving their body enough healing time. The people I've interviewed in my book, they don't require a lot of sleep because they don't abuse their body on a daily basis ten times a day by overeating unhealthy food. Overeating and undersleeping is something we have to think about. Now many, tell, many people tell me they get a lot of sleep. There's a big difference between a lot of sleep and enough sleep. And the majority of people today simply are not getting enough sleep. And the reason why is because they're overeating. Nothing takes more energy from the body than digestion. And if you don't think that's true, think about this. Somebody can eat an apple and run a marathon, but after a Thanksgiving meal, they're falling asleep. And don't blame it on the turkey, because I know a lot of people that had turkey, and there's no drug in a turkey that makes people fall asleep. It's overeating on the turkey that makes you fall asleep. Overeating is a problem. We need to do something about that. So to do something about that, we have to think, well, why do we overeat? That would be the obvious question. Why do we overeat? And there's many different factors, but from a physical standpoint, there's one reason we overeat for. We overeat because the food we're eating is low quality. When the food is low quality, even though we're taking that food in our body, if the food doesn't have the nutrients that our body needs, guess what we're going to crave? More food. And if we don't have that information and that knowledge to get something good quality, we continue to eat this low quality food, creating a deficiency in the body, making the body work harder to process it, requiring more sleep, we keep doing that and not knowing what's happening. We could starve ourselves. We could starve ourselves by overeating. And that's what's happening. <coughs> we need to eat higher quality foods. Now what is a high quality food? Five things. Now remember, you don't have to eat 100% according to these five things, but the majority of your diet should consist of these things if you want to experience better health. What are these five things? Raw, ripe, fresh, organic, and live. Raw, ripe, fresh, organic, and live. These are the five things that make a high quality food. Now later we're going to talk about not only the food, but how we eat it, when we eat it, and so on. That also is important. But we're going to look at these five things right now. The importance of it. The first one is raw. What is so great about raw food? We hear many different things. But what is so important about raw food? Two things. Two things. Liquid and enzymes. Liquid and enzymes. These are the two things that are important. By the way, do you know what the majority of the human body is made up of? Liquid and enzymes. These are the things that are so important in the raw foods. Now first let's look at liquids. The liquid that's in the raw foods are the liquid that has food. It's like swallowing a dry sponge. That sponge is going to come out wet, if it comes out at all. And guess what, where that liquid is coming from? It's coming from your body. It dehydrates us. The next one is enzymes. The importance of enzymes in the body is it conserves the energy of the body so the body can have that energy for other important functions. Let me give you a simple example of what enzymes do in the body and maybe you'll understand it better. Picture right here, there was a door to a room with a lock and a key on it. And you wanted something very bad on the other side. There's only two ways to get there. One way is to simply take the key, open up the lock, go inside the room and get what you need out of it, using very little energy and stress to do so. Now if you don't have that key, the only other way to get to the other side is to kick and break the nutri nutrients that our body needs to thrive and survive. And when we eat foods without that, foods that are cooked and it's destroyed, what happens is the body becomes dehydrated. There's a great book out called Your Body's Many Cries for Water, which talks about the harmful effects of dehydration. When you're dehydrating, your body has to use more energy and work harder to do every other process it would have had to do if you're hydrating. 